uh, Motion Builder. Let's see, 2018. I'll go ahead and start opening the Unreal project as well. All right, so here's the layout of Motion Builder. Uh, here's your you know viewport, and then you have um, you know this is a lot um, all the stuff in your scene is right here. So this little box right here actually has a lot of um, features. It shows you all the cameras and stuff like that. And then um, on the right side we have some templates. It has tutorials. It has a lot of just like the things that are built in. Uh, then we have a way of doing keyframe animations, and we'll get to this whole big blank space in a second. Okay. First of all, we just want Big Vegas in there. Go over to Downloads. And let's also put this on my desktop. All right, so we have downloads, and then it's working on it apparently. Come on, Explorer. So this is working on it. Go ahead, we'll a project real quick. <coughs> Boom. Come on. There we go. So Big Vegas, where are you? Do it by date. There we go. And the 2018 version of uh, Motion Builder supports drag and drop. That's why I like it so much. Like open, and I don't want to open any takes. Mixmo comes with like a a T pose. Well, right, we'll, we'll keep the T pose. We'll do uh, take one for T pose. And there we are. All right. So here's Big Vegas. Um, we have our navigation tools kind of up here at the top. Anyone using Cinema 4D might be familiar with doing it this way. I also have uh, done the, gone the preferences and saying, let me use the Maya navigation as well. So I'm holding down Alt now and doing the kind of same stuff. How do you do it for like hair? Um, hair either simulate it or you use additional um, IK chains. Um, a lot of that stuff you don't really do for real time game engine stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have like a thing you might do, but in general, you want to watch out for how many bones you have in your character, uh, especially for like mobile. You're actually capped at doing 72 bones uh, for mobile phones, so uh, just things to be considered to consider. The word of T pose. This is called Take 01. If I come over here to the left side, this tiny little box that has so much important stuff. Our scene now is the different pieces of geometry for for our um, Elvis, and then the hips right there. Okay, down here is our takes, right? I don't want this to say take zero one when I come into uh, Unreal. I want to rename it to be T pose, right? And now it's updated there. This is my list of current takes. I can make a new take if I wanted to, but we're just gonna stay right here. Here's T pose. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna make a new take. New take. No, I don't want to copy the data, um, or I can because I'm just doing the T pose for right now. And this one is gonna be called Range of Motion Dance. Who's interested? Who can't wait to see Elvis do the range of motion dance? Yeah, that's going to be pretty pretty spectacular. All right, so now let's go find that that data, which I'll put on my desktop, and we have a folder for Psy. Boop. And I do believe I didn't rename them. I could have renamed them. I'm assuming it's the first one. So here again, I can bring it in here, and now I merge. If I open it, it will close the other file. And merge, and then I also want to have all takes or this take right here, either or. FBX files can have many, many animation files in them. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, either make the decision ultimately to have one big Vegas with a bunch of animation tracks. That's how I can give it to a client as a deliverable. Or I can export each animation track separately, which is how I probably work on with the game with somebody because I'm giving them one at a time. Like, oh, yeah, we start with this one, but now you already have the character loaded into your game, and we only need the animation data for the next takes. So there's two different ways of doing it. Right now, bring it in. And what we see here is, there we go. So she's actually facing, the, remember we were facing down Z, and this would be a huge issue 
if we weren't going to do the next step. All right. The next step is going to go back over here, find her hips, select all the uh, branches underneath it, and then I'm going to right click and say zero out the rotations. That flips her around and it makes a perfect T pose. So again, the T pose that we're doing in that room is for the cameras. It's not for the retargeting. We're going to override it this way. Okay. So it's a perfect T pose. Now that I have these two uh, pieces of data, the one thing that it, um, uh, that you tell it is, hey, these are not just FBXs. These are characters. I need these are these are characters we're going to put data on. So we have to do a process with that's called characterization. Um, over here, I have I told you a bunch of templates and stuff. I'm going to bring over a standard character. First to Elvis Hips, it says, um, sure, it's locked. Okay, that's fine with me. That's weird. I have never seen that before. <coughs> Too much fun. Uh, I think it's because it has a bunch of facial animation stuff. We might have to use another character. Elvis has a whole bunch of extra bones. He's not really ready for mocap. Uh, poor Elvis. We could fix this, but I'm not going to do it live. We're going to get another character, unfortunately, guys. I know. I know. Just bait and switch all day long. All right. Okay. Let's delete. Let's select all the branches and delete it. And we'll have to do something more traditional. All right. But what we can't, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get the other character in there first. So let's go to Mixamo. Then something a little more traditional, like a, like a, like a zombie. Mm -hmm. Slim Pickens. We're going to be the boss. Oh. <laughs> well, then tell me something. Can I be the big headed cartoon that's under there? At the bottom? This one? No, the dude. This dude. Yeah, that dude. Ty. Hey. That's only one letter off. Right? Aww. <laughs> it's not going to be as funny for the range of motion dance, but it's still going to be. It's going to be. It's going to be cute. It's going to be adorable. It's super cute. It's going to be super adorable, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm screen recording, yeah. Yeah. All right, so now let's see if Ty looks a little bit better. I couldn't imagine that Ty is um, is like a facial animation rig. Now it looks pretty 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 standard. All right, so let's go back to here. We have boy hips. All right, uh, we're going to characterize. is biped works great and how do i know because underneath the list of characters we have um a list of we we just need to start from scratch i feel like we get rid of this let's delete yes to all let's delete clean it cleaning it up a little house cleaning let's do this again all right so characterize boy hips and say it's a biped <laughs> now under the characters we have this first character which is him and we'll just call it, we'll rename it so that it doesn't get confusing again and it'll be avatar all right and now let's go back to the motion capture data which is right here select all the branches and then i want to zero it out now notice i'm not keyframing it i'm not changing the data i just want to zero it out for the for the character characterization process there we go. Characterize, biped, and then this one I'll just call data. To make it easier for myself. Cool. And now what we're going to do, we're going to have one character drive the other character. All right, so our avatar can be driven by another character. And the other character is called data. I'm now going to activate this. And let's 
there it is. But because we had the other, let's make it. Do we have more data? Yeah, I think it was like a thousand frames. If I put in the in the other order, um, then it auto makes the whole thing. There we go. Okay. All right. So here's our character. Aww. How's it going? Hi. Look at me. <laughs> oh shit! That's cool. That's cool. Let's just wait. Yeah. So what you do notice is that she's taller than our character, and what happens is it scales the motion proportionally. Okay, that's the whole retargeting process. The most natural way for a taller or smaller character would be is to walk in bigger or smaller spaces, right? So you can imagine that looks the more natural, but what if we're in a mocap situation where we've already modeled our environment? We can actually direct our mocap in VR and see the character performing around inside the, of the environment. We need it to be exactly where it needs to be. We want the feet to be precise, all right? So underneath, um, down here, there's a whole bunch of settings we won't, we won't even get into it's like its own class. Uh, it's called a mocap class. Um, but the one button that is important for you guys to know for VR is match source. Let's go to a frame where they're like off. Like right here, you see that they're off. If I do match source, they share the same feet. Then, right? It could be really crazy if you have a tiny character, a big person. Also, they're they're walking like that. It could be really off. But for right now. Uh, you know, you want to generally cast the sim similar physique to the to the uh, character you're doing, and uh, these aren't too far off. This will still look fine, right? Cool. Um, but this isn't on the on the uh, on the uh, avatar yet. I'm still just actively letting it drive it. I need a plot. I need to put the keyframes. There's a keyframe every frame for every bone on uh, the mocap data, I need to put that on the character, all right? So um, I'm going to say plot character, and I have two options, control rig and skeleton. I'm gonna do skeleton for this one, I'll do a control rig for the next one. Skeleton, plot, done. I can delete the data. I can delete first the character. and the data. And now it's just, here's the take, and if I save, like this is the take I want, all right? Um, and it's the take range of motion. But now I'm gonna do another take. I wanna do the, uh, the, the crab walk, okay? I'm gonna do a new take, copy it from this new one. No, actually I'm gonna cancel. I'm gonna come back to the T-pose, and then I will uh, say new take from T-Pose. Actually, I go into the T-Pose. Oh, I didn't do it right. That's OK. Anyway, I'm going to come over here to uh, do a new, t new take. Now I don't copy. And the new take is going to be called Crab Walk. And then I'm going to bring back in the data from that one. So this should be my desktop. And that was take two. Bring it in, merge it, just bring in the one take. And <laughs> pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So let's go back to. The boy and his hips, we need to, it's already a character, so we have to worry about characterizing again. And we just need to zero it out, hopefully. Let's see if we can. Okay, great. Let us zero it out, and then select branches for mocap. As far as this um, uh, software is concerned, though, this data is a brand new take and needs to be characterized all from scratch. So go over here, do this, characterize, biped, 
rename it, and now it's data. And now double click on the avatar again and say whatever you are, you are a uh, character driven by another character. Let's make it active. Match source is still on. All my retargeting settings will stay for this character as long as we keep them in there. And then we play. I couldn't ask for a better performance. All right? So, <laughs> so there we go. Um, way to go. And you can imagine all sorts of settings in here where we actually have to bind and constrain like the hips or constrain the elbows, all sorts of settings for every single bone, matching the foot onto the floor, all these kind of things uh, can be done inside of all these settings, just a whole bunch of them. Um, but what I want to do now is I'm going to plot it, and I'm going to plot it to, instead of a skeleton, to a control rig. And this is something that's kind of amazing that this software does. I'm going to do both forward kinematic and inverse kinematic. It automates an entire control rig for animation. Now uh, the control rig is active, but this data is no longer needed. So I'm going to delete. And I'm going to go to here and select all branches and delete. Cool. So now we have this character. And it has a control rig. What does that mean? Well. I, over here, have this base animation, but I want to do a blending layer. I don't want to, I don't want to alter my motion capture. I'm going here. But I want to come over here, and right about there, the head goes to the floor. So I'm going to select the head controller right there. Let's say keyframe. And then go over here to where it's good again, which is right about there. Let's say keyframe. Let's come into the middle, and let's rotate it. I actually have to do, I have to use it this. Why are you locked? Animation layer, control reference, controller, avatar, the control rig is active, movable, huh. Always something, right, guys? Let's see. Match source, active source. Uh -huh. Let's, try. Let's try doing a hand. Hands are usually easier. Everything is locked. Let's see. I was saying the character was locked earlier. Let's see what that would be. Properties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's all locked. It's all locked. Let's say I want to just animate a body part. There we go. So it has inverse kinematics, so I can kind of pull at the keyframe there. And what happens is it animates and doesn't go through the floor, right? What's really cool about like the inverse kinematics is like the hands are really natural. Like he wants to raise it, see how it bends the elbows and solves for it. It's like a, this is amazing kind of rig, right? And then um, you know, if I don't keyframe it, it's back on the ground. But you can imagine like like right there, if I want to make that hand not go through the floor, we can have that kind of level of of detail. Saying, let's see, it's right when it hits, we'll be fine. Do that. There we go. And then come back over here. And then we want to maybe rotate it. So you can spend a lot of time on this. And uh, this is how you make your mocap data then grip things and stuff, right? This control rig is down to the fingers. You can literally like grab. Um, all these finger end sockets, and then you just rotate them, and they all just close a little bit. So it's a, it's a pretty cool um, system. Let's see, make it fit really nice and whatever. And then keyframe that, and then you just can kind of go through there and do that. All right. So this is an anim just like Photoshop. This is a layer. 
it needs to be merged down before I can bake it to the skeleton. I select them both and then I merge it down to a base animation. Merge it down to a base animation. This is really funny. Causing me problems. Delete merged layers. Merge log properties. Um, and then then we can export it. Let's see which one I'm doing wrong. Anyway, I'm just going to say bye. And what's cool about this now is that I have um, uh, if I keep on adding this mocap, this is a new kind of mocap. I can then export just the the, the tracking data for this and apply it to other characters, right? So all my new additions, I have the previous mocap, which was unaltered, and this new mocap that I can now uh, use. And then I have this character. And I have two tra two takes. I have three takes, but one of them is redundant. And I'm going to save now. So there's two main settings are uh, you always want to embed media. That's your animation clips. And then if I was handing this off to a client, this would be all I need, right? It has three takes in there, and it's one file for them. If I'm working with a uh, group, I might want to save each one uh, to a different file. So I'm just handing off a single animation file to people and not and not wasting their time. For, for right now, we're going to do the, the client version, which is embed all of them. I'm going to save this down to my downloads. And it's called, for some reason, thinks it's still called Big Vegas, which is fine for me. We can call that guy Big Vegas. And see, there's our... Three takes. Yes, I want all three of those takes there. And then we go to our Unreal scene. I don't remember what chaos is happening okay. here. Yeah, this is. I'm gonna Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm gonna get, a, get us a fresh start. I don't even know what's going on there anymore. We haven't been there since before snow days. Uh, now I'm gonna. Go to my content browser, assets, field of meshes. I have now uh, a new folder for Ty Big Vegas. All right? And we're going to import the animation, which was still called Big Vegas, hopefully. And then, uh, yes, yeah, skeleton mesh, import mesh. And let's go ahead and bring in all the animations as well. All right, and let's make sure we have range of motion. Right, probably could have done that hands and like animated to the side a little bit, right? So it wasn't going through this big head. That's kind of stuff you'd use uh, the, that blending layers for. Great. So let's go ahead and bring in range of motion, range of motion, range of motion, range of motion, range of motion. Range of motion. Crab walk, crab walk, crab walk, crab walk, crab walk, and let's see what happens. Oh, range of motion was the T pose. I see. No problem. Oh, sorry. Crab walk was the T pose. I hope I made it. I put it. Let's see. Hope we got the crab walk. That's all I'm saying. Is crab walk actually? T pose. Mm -hmm. Huh. We'll have to re export it. Uh, but anyway. Anyway. Cool. So uh, now, I, really quickly, before, before we break off, I want to. Um, talk to you guys about streaming levels a little bit. Um, this is a way that uh, you can work in groups, and uh, even if you're not using version control, it's just a way to let you know that 
lay, lay, uh, levels or maps can be merged and separated out. And just it's a it's a good way of knowing a workflow. Be like, here is not only my assets, but my assets placed in arrangement in the way I want them to be placed. All right. So I can make a. I'm gonna save all this. All this nonsense. And I'm going to. Ref this is gonna be big Vegas. Great. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this uh, player start, though. And then I'm going to save, and I'm going to start a new level. If I refer to our Unreal Starter, uh, uh, Unreal Style Guide, when we go to uh, the most common uh, naming conventions, we have levels. And you see that levels... Um, oftentimes have a lot of sub-levels to them. We have a persistent, which is the main level, which is always there. If I go to back to here, and I look at the levels window, which is in your windows, levels, you'll see that the main level is called persistent, right? Turn off persistent, nothing is there. Right? This is persistent, it's always there. And then you can put things like audio, lighting, geometry, and gameplay, and stuff like that, um, and other sub-levels. If I um, make a new level that's empty I would put my pawn in the empty the top level everything that you want to have inside the level sequencer um, the main level sequencer would be in the main level but you can have sub level sequencers like that All right so I have my pawn here but I want to I want it to also load in those uh, big Vegas is exactly the way that somebody else arranged them for me so I can actually add the existing level in this way. I have no idea where that stuff was though. Where did I save it to? Big Vegas is in starter content maps. Starter content maps. Big Vegas. Great. So now I have Big Vegas. If I am see I it's blue. It's because I'm now in Big Vegas and all my edits are happening to Big Vegas. If I double click my persistent level, all my, happening, all my uh, things are happening there. All right? And then if I go to my view options, I can actually hide or I can say only show me things in my current level. If I'm in persistent, all I have is a player start. If I'm in v Big Vegas, all I have is Big Vegas stuff. Right? I can just easily now say select all... Uh, you know, copy and paste, go back to my persistent level, hide Big Vegas, and then put it in there, right? Just select everything from here, move it over like that, and now look, I got two levels with Big Vegas is in it, right? So this is a way of importing and copying things over, right? But yet, uh, the problem is if I hit play, well, the problem is I'm underneath the floor. If I fly around, I'm not seeing all those big Vegases. And what happened was, start. I got pushed off the floor. Um, and what happened was, is that this right here has a blue dot by it. It means it wants to be opened uh, by blueprints only. Change streaming method, blueprint. That's the default. If I say always loaded, then they're always loaded. Right? But what's good about having it by blueprint is let's say you are making a big map and you want to have uh, a, a level behind a closed door. If I, if I change the streaming level to be off, right, I go to it, open level blueprint, And then when the door op is about to open, then I did not mean to do that. <coughs> we can load the stream level and make it visible after load. And it's called Big Vegas. It's case sensitive.
But let's let's add a, a toggle to this. I'm gonna. It's called flip flop. We're also gonna unload afterwards. So now I made I changed the blueprint only, so it will not be loaded at first. So say you come to a door, you don't want to have it loaded just because um, persistent or uh, main p. You don't want to have it loaded because you don't want to waste the resources of having all that stuff there. So it's not loaded to begin with. I get the door. I got to go through it. Let's go ahead and then load it. Walk through the door, and then maybe when I close the door behind me, I could then take off the other level. This is just a way of being efficient with what you're trying, what's in your memory, right? You can spawn these things. You can also make them spawn and be invisible. There's different different levels. Um, I don't think you guys need to get into too much of this. Um, it can get a little logistically nightmarish to figure out like which level you're in at the time. Like I don't have to be inside to persist it with the big Vegas underneath. I can actually just work on Big Vegas by itself. Like I'm in the main right now. I'm going to save. And so one person maybe just works with persistent with all the sub levels. And if we can just go in and say, well, I own Big Vegas. And I can just add things to Big Vegas. And I'll go back into the main. There are those things that were added from Big Vegas. And then one other thing to really uh, caveat is the fact that now that we have multiple levels, that your blueprints, you have a main blueprint for the persistent, but each of the sub-levels has its own. So if I was doing stuff and just working in Big Vegas, just know that those blueprints are only going to be in a sub-level. Um, and you can make it communicate in between. It's just that's the way it's organized in the hierarchy. Um, but yeah, it's a good way to say, I want to have everything in my Big Vegas level. I'm only showing those items and probably get rid of that, get rid of that. I'm going to take everything here. Those are all redundant. There you go. Take everything here and just like, move it around. Play. Cool. Anyone have any questions about all that stuff cool all right so that's mocap